Our third poet tonight is Francis Sparshot, who is Professor of Ethics at Victoria College. Uh, he's published uh, several philosophical works, notably An Inquiry into Goodness and a fine volume of poems, A Divided Voice, uh, with Oxford Press in 1967. Francis Barshot. I was puzzled, weren't you, by the odium that Colombo expressed for a podium? I mean, lectins like this are my notion of bliss. So I took, so I took that with chloride of sodium. Um, open for a better last line. <coughs> There's a nasty shadow on it, actually. Um, this is called Before the Lecture. It really comes from my other occupation. Unknown faces wait for my words. What if I have no words for them? Silence, I shall tell them, is better. Unimpressed faces. What words would you like? Your words. What have you got? No words you don't have already. But we came all this way, and we spent all this money, and we were promised words. Give us your words. What use is a word without a man behind it? We want words. There are too many words about altogether. It is wicked to add to them. Better we should take a pill or pull sleeves over our heads. Things went better when there was more desolation. In a general way, we would agree. But now, specifically, here in this hall, we presently insist upon words. Unsympathetic faces, hiding behind bored sockets, such separate silences as cannot be broken by words. Now, <coughs> um, the Witch of Wookie, um, above the riv river in Wookie Hole Cave in Somerset, there stands a stalagmite known as the Witch of Wookie. It looks like my, like my Aunt Hilda. Um, on emerging from the cave, the river used to provide water for Mr. Hodgkinson's hand mill, ha handmade paper mill that's now closed. I mean, it's the paper, not the mill's handmade. I miss those plummy phrases that were mine in my hot teens. Dealing from that stacked deck, aces of hearts, I thought the tricks were fine. Now I mourn rhetoric and her wrung neck. A papermaker strains to lift his frame of pulp and double shakes it with his wrist till after 20 years, each day the same, his knack just goes. The worker is dismissed. What locks the fibres in a turn of phrase, I never knew. The numbers used to come, thrown like Medusae on a public beach. One day, the clichéd oracles went dumb. That wristy skill, once lost, never comes back. Poor thrown rhetoric. What of our lost neck? <clears throat> this is called Combermere's Mill. There never was a Combermere. There was a mill. Combermere's Mill stands over slates on a corner in Delce. Combermere is not grinding. To the north, allotments begin sustained out of tarred shacks, framed in brass bedstead ends, yielding starved cabbages for desolate pensioners. All day, and all yesterday, the gale blew straight from the northwest, but Combermere is not grinding. He sits in the doorway and reads, in his mill's shelter, reads yesterday's paper the sail sideways to the wind. Nobody comes near him. 
On the ridge of the next hill, on an empty field marked out for football, chalk under thin loam, the soldiers prepare. One brushes mud from his greatcoat. Most squat and say nothing. In an iron pot on a good fire, one prepares soup. There is cabbage in it. The tarred wood makes a red flame. Their weapons are piled. Someone points to the mill on the next ridge, where the smoke of their supper whips past the idle sweeps and does not turn them. <clears throat> Grenade. Anger was all I expected. Coiled trembler, detonator a dove's eye, impending lead. So I took my opener to the sunflower, tore tin petals, black heart eclipsed for good now. But friends, defusing's a delicate operation. When you see the sky's Caesarean scar, remember a man fused into black glass, his anger jerked off, lucky sod, never learned to like breathing. Circles a vulture in his own dark sky. Navigator. <clears throat> Spun toward perihelion on the plunging poop of a winter world, sailing under bare poles, he takes inconstant stars, miles out in his dead reckoning. By teak keys of walled forts, whose erectile guns prod among honeysuckle over the go-downs, leans into capstan, lifts from its floor barnacled mudhook through weeds, fish, garbage, chants to the mate's accordion, greetings beneath, lanterns above, sustain us with their indifference and love. On reeling sheets, these are defence, love, and indifference. Riveted steel after the corked oak, rust after rot. The indeterminate box through squall, overswell, hangs in its gimbals what's constant both ways. Hold to the vertical. Lead lined and still, the box holds him, bears him down through weeds, through silt, under a priest's chant. His own compass now, though tilted earth, bears him no longer to the standing sun. Oh, an accurate poem called Book Keeping. What was it cost me four dollars, April 29? I can't read the entry. On a good day, it looks like milk or mail. Mornings like this, mire or perhaps ruin. Most of the time, it looks like misc. But what kind of entry is that for a man's accounts? When I have nothing better to do, which is most of the time, I read the entry, four bucks gone. Nothing to show for it. And uh, a group of uh, World War II-ish poems. Um, <coughs> first, The Cloud. Why does my mind keep returning to the long morning, staring at the wall? The cloudless morning when nobody worked, when nobody talked, or nobody heard them, a day without pity or anger, alone with the one thought, we did that. Why do my thoughts keep to the one track? What are they trying to hide? Why do they always go back to Hiroshima? Now, interview. 
And here we are in the beautiful city of Nagasaki with its wide open spaces, and we are about to interview a respected citizen. Your name, sir, please. Yamamoto. Happy to know you, Mr. Yamamoto, sir. My, that's a fine tan you have there. You've been out in the sun, I can see that. Please, I took all the shelter there was. Any family, Mr. Yamamoto, sir? I married, we had three children, the eldest five, the youngest two. I would show you a photograph, but it is overexposed. And what were your emotional reactions, Mr. Yamamoto, when the device fell? I was so moved, the eyes ran down my cheeks. Do you harbor any resentment, Mr. Yamamoto, after all you have been through? I have no such feeling, no feeling at all. And do you have any further message for our readers? Why, yes, sir. I wish you would tell them. I wish. Tell them. And uh, next, argument with Dr. Williams. Uh, this is the W.C. Williams, who um, had a poem <coughs> about so much depends on uh, <coughs> Red Wheel Baron and all that. And um, this doesn't put down Dr. Williams, but it's an argument with Dr. Williams. But nothing depends on your old wheelbarrow. In the last firestorm of Hamburg, not one man, there was not one killed, but would have died at last. Over deep wounds, sound tissue closes. If one way is blocked, wise cells find another. Who needs Sappho's lost lyrics, faded masterpieces of Raphael, torn down temples of Athens? Old achievements crowd new vision out. My dead father makes room for the living me. The good and the bad go down equally, and the bad and the good come up equally in their place. Whatever bombs fall, kill only the due dead from the next census. Shocked headlines shriek of deaths no more lethal than the senile sort, but love has never learned to give up its hold on raindrops on wheelbarrows and burned children screaming for mothers whose milk is boiled out of their breasts. <laughs> <laughs>